Hello and welcome back after a bit of a hiatus to the tomato timer. My name is Zaber and I'm really excited to relaunch the, the episode uh, with a really awesome guest, Victor Newman. He is a Sigma Squared fellow where we are together and he's also the founder of Invested, which is changing the future of free independent financial education. Um, I'm really excited to have you, Victor. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing, Zuber. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, we have to dive straight into it. You know, why is financial education a problem? We're hearing it everywhere. Um, we're seeing the challenges in this kind of incredibly uh, unpredictable financial situation. But personally, why is financial education still a problem for young people? Um, I would say financial education and missing financial education is a huge problem since um, money and, and the economy is something most of us deal with on an everyday basis. Like even if you wanted to, you can't escape the systems that we're living in. Um, and I just think it's super bad that we are not taught about it enough in school or sometimes we're not taught about it in any way. There are a lot of countries who don't have financial literacy or financial education as a subject on the timetable for, for students from any age. Um, some countries talk about it a little bit, but also not in enough depth, I would say. Um, and actually, studies have shown that financial education should be part of so-called core education. So core education is defined as something that you need to kind of be a, a self, um, you know, self-deciding citizen of a democratic country. Um, yeah. And some studies have shown that actually financial education should be part of this core education, but it's still not taught in schools because... Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's a highly controversial topic in some sense. Um, and yeah, I believe we should change that because too many young people um, take on credit card debt without actually knowing what they're doing in that moment. They don't really understand how money works and um, what actually money is. And that kind of leads them to really bad situations in their life where they don't need uh, to end up if they would have known things about money beforehand. Yeah. And what, what was it that triggered you to kind of start looking at this problem more deeply? Was it a personal situation or is it something that you saw? Um, so I, I would say a mix of uh, personal situations and, and things I saw in my surroundings. So within my um, my family and my friends in Germany, I've seen a couple of cases where people um, didn't know how to deal with money and went into kind of really bad situations in their life, which was quite unnecessary because then um, the money issue in their life became way too big of a topic and money kind of controlled their life. Um, we always say as investors, we want you to control your money and not money to control you. Um, yeah. So so that was one thing. The other thing was I was a student, obviously, at some point myself uh, in, in my life in Germany. And you wouldn't believe it, but Germany is actually really, really, really badly behind when it comes to introducing financial education um, to schools. Um, actually, we are one of the worst countries in Europe. <laughs> um, and um, therefore, I'm from Germany. I didn't have financial education in my high school. Um, so I saw kind of how it affected me that I wish that I would have had a kind of a guided subject in school that would have guided me through it. And also I saw friends who ended up in bad situations. Um, yeah. And after high school in Germany, I went to the US and their personal finance was a mandatory topic um, to graduate high school, actually. And I just okay. thought, OK, this is kind of a huge difference in Germany. It's not even offered and here. You needed to graduate in some states. Um, so there's something that needs to be done here in Europe. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you kind of mentioned it in your previous answer. But what is invested in, and what, what led to the, the birth of invested? Um, so, so as mentioned, I've seen um, cases in, in my surroundings and also at myself that that if I would have known more about money, some things could have gone more sm smoothly and yeah. without less, like with less stress. Um, and then during high school, I was actually um, involved in another organization that kind of promoted the topic of financial literacy. But that organization promoted the topic in a in a way that I would not advocate for anymore because it was really driven by um, by the stock market and driven by by insurance companies and banks that sponsored that organization. Um, and I wanted to build something that is actually an independent organization focused purely on education and not on, you know, also being a marketing engine for these banks and insurance companies. Um, and that's why I kind of saw a gap in the market, at least for me, to build something that that I would have loved to have as a student. That's always the premise um, that we tell everyone that is involved with Invested you just go and build that 
organization that you would have loved to have when you were a student. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was a project at school, right? We were, we were good friends and co-founded it? Uh, yes. So so actually, I co -founded, uh, the first meeting we ever had for Invested was in February 2020, uh, one week mm. before an amazing well, no. situation <laughs> happened yeah. that affected us all. Um, yeah. And it was an in-person meeting with a couple of friends from from high school. Um, and and but from there on, actually, we really, really, really fast went fully remote. Um, and now we have team members from all over Germany and actually all over Europe. We're not spread across like three time zones. Um, so, yeah, a lot gone on since then, but the co-founders were mates from school. Yeah, amazing. Um, and, and you mentioned this, and I, I can definitely see uh, some examples of this, even in, in the spaces that I occupy, where we have financial literacy programs, but they are sponsored by or run in conjunction with larger financial institutions, banks, you know, different other players in the market that want to have insights, understanding of, young people's finances. Um, and of course, if you're looking at it from a, I don't know, five, 10 year horizon, the Gen Z's right now and the, the way they spend money is gonna be the most important data that you can use to then track and kind of project and think about you know their credit scores, et cetera, et cetera. So it is scary, the fact that there seems to be like these all these great programs that look really good, especially because they're for free and they're well-designed. But then you think about it, actually what you, what you share with these people or organizations, you are also kind of potentially just like signing your life away at a very, very early age. So independent programs are so critical. What, what else have you seen in this space? And what is, you know, why why are there not more independent organizations doing this work? Um, great question. Um, so, so, I mean, one thing to note here that obviously not, not all banks and insurance companies and financial services providers who sponsor those initiatives are bad or have any bad intentions. That's just mm -hmm. something I want to make clear. I don't want to, you know, generally bash a group of society. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, but so 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 one thing that we saw when we started out was, OK, we, we kind of need funding to to build an educational organization that helps work, holds workshops at schools that produces content more or less on scale that maybe produces yeah. a software to learn with. Um, I mean, you as the, the founder of Xenodes, you can probably best speak to that, that, um, you know, you need funding to build something. Yeah, <laughs> and absolutely. especially in the education sector, funding is not is not as easily accessible as in other sectors, um, yeah. just simply because not always you can make a lot of money with education. And when we started out, we were, um, you know, in standing in front of the same challenge. How do we fund what we want to do? And then we were looking at, okay, what, what would be the biggest cost factors in what we're trying to build? And the biggest cost factors were the people, um, the people who run the workshops, who create the content. And then we made the really conscious decision to build it all on, on top of volunteers. So I myself, I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid. No one at our organization gets paid. And, and that kind of took away a lot of our costs. And therefore, we didn't need it funding anymore. But if we would have gone the route of you know, doing it full time, having people who do it full time, um, there's a big need for funding and the people who want to provide funding really easy are banks and insurance companies. So that's the reason why a lot of them are involved within the field of financial literacy, because they're willing to, you know, put up the money to, to fund those educational programs, because obviously they have a huge interest in touching, um, touching base with those young potential new customers really, really early on, which is totally understandable out of a business perspective. They have a huge customer lifetime value going forward. Um, so so why not try to reach them even earlier, even before they're 18, when they're still yeah. in high school? Um, so yeah, but we wanted to do that differently. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into the, the actual, what is financial education? Because um, you've talked about the differences across different geographies and the different kind of compulsory natures of them as well. But also what's being taught is also quite different. Um, I know we, we discussed this earlier as well, that the EU has some guidelines and some frameworks to provide in terms of what are the critical topics and how should you be taught those things. Um, what are some of the kind of, can you, can you give us some like high level uh, concepts and spaces or, or chapters, I guess, that make up for what a young person should know before entering, or they probably are already in the economic system, but how they should be aware of the different instruments and, and functions and, and different things that exist in the system. Sure. Um, so one big misconception that we actually ran into when we started out was that you have to think financial literacy and education not as uh, topics that you need to cover, 
but more as competencies that that the students mm. need to kind of need to kind of get out of financial literacy and education because at the end they need to apply the the, the knowledge or the competencies in that sense in so many different right. situations that a pure factual knowledge would not be enough to to give them an independent life um right. so that's one huge thing that you need to think about but then those competencies are basically the, the core competencies that are defined by the EU and by the by the German government um, basically just cover income expenses, what is insurance, um, how does kind of the stock market and saving for later work and how does budgeting work um, and also credit and, and debt. That's the those are the kind of the big things that that uh, those competencies cover. Um, and there's actually a model for people who are really interested uh, that, that covers those competencies in, in depth and defines um, defines the different kind of sub points of those competencies. Gotcha. Um, would definitely love to take you up on the offer of that model and share that in our in our episode links as well, because I think people would definitely be interested. Can you tell me like some of the ones which um, as you because I know at Invested, you're doing a whole bunch of different things to start upskilling and delivering the kind of these competencies. What are some things that always stick out to you as like ones which young people are overlooking and not have a good awareness of? Um, I'd say also, if you look at like what content is out there on YouTube, a lot of young people are like super blended and interested in the stock market and crypto and how you can make money fast. Um, and they overlook the, the boring basics a lot of the time. Um, so how does credit work? How does, uh, you know, budgeting work? A lot of people overlook those topics also when they create those financial literacy programs and then they focus too much on, on insurance and on kind of the stock market and how to invest. I mean, I mean, we are guilty of it as well. We are called invested. So we kind of have it in our name that we are focused on this investing point. Um, but a lot of people actually overlook the really boring basics of financial literacy um, that are super important to to um, to live a healthy financial life, how to budget your income, how do taxes work? Um, taxes are probably one of the best examples that no one is really interested in. Yeah, yeah, I, I can. I'm. Uh, very aware of that, especially in the last few few years, as I have had to become more and more um, knowledgeable about both corporate taxes and personal taxes and how they all interact and uh, a whole bunch of organizations that I have to manage and do different things for. Um, I, I've I've been lucky. I have a, a dad who's a chartered accountant, so I've always been like in the know of money and where it goes. Uh, a little bit too much, maybe sometimes as well. But it is it is critical. Like uh, I remember heading to university and realizing that how easy it is to not know what you're spending, where you're spending and how you're spending it. Um, it's such an easy, like, I, I don't know about you, but like contactless, forget about the card. Now our phones are what we take around everywhere. It makes life so much easier. We just don't even think when money is going and coming in. Um, we're not able to project and like kind of forecast what our expenses will be for the month and whether we'll have that income or that kind of availability to do so. Uh, and it just, you know, even when we like go for our first jobs, we don't really think about the fact that how a salary will be able to cover the kind of the expenses of living in a city and, and eating healthy and doing all these different things. And uh, it's really scary when you see, uh, as you have as well, I, I saw a lot of these challenges at, at university. Um, and it's just really, really sad that we end up in, in bad situations. So, talking about more about the basics though, um, you talked about taxes, and budgeting as, as some critical points. What, when you, why did you call yourself invested? Though? What is what is the there's there's something beyond that as well. Like because we also think investment is something that can only be done at a very very later age or later stage of our lives. Um, so the name invested also actually derives from kind of part of the philosophy that we teach, or that we believe in next to you know the the core competencies as well because we think that. Um, an investment doesn't necessarily have to has to be something monetarily. You can also invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where the name comes from. We wanted to to tell and to show people, hey, if you get good education really early on, you are investing in yourself, um, and and therefore yeah. giving yourself a better life after um, after on, like afterwards. Um, compound interest as one of those economic concepts that that we like to teach people really early on that there can also be compound interests when it comes to teaching yourself. Like if you gain a skill really consistently yeah. really early on, you can excel exponentially within that skill and, and make kind of your life a little bit smoother in, in the area you want to improve in. 
Um, and that's also why we call ourselves investors, because we want to teach that long term thinking philosophy, um, because also in the in today's world, a lot is really short term focus, um, short term thinking. And, and we think it's it's important to advocate for for long term thinking. But um, the long term thinking organization doesn't sound so so cool. So that's why we <laughs> picked the name Invested. <laughs> No, I, I see what you mean. So both the, the financial piece, but also the, the personal piece as well. Now, you're doing a whole bunch of things. Tell me a little bit about the, the specific offerings and also um, what we're doing together as well, which is super exciting. Yeah, sure. I'm uh, really looking forward to that, by the way. Um, so as an investor, we originally started out and we wanted to build an education platform, like a really classic kind of Udemy for finance, this kind of thing. But we realized pretty quickly that with that, we might reach some people, but we will not reach the people where it's really critical to reach them um, in like schools and not great areas of cities, stuff like that, like where financial literacy really can have a big social impact at the end. Um, so that's why we expanded pretty quickly to also do workshops in person and online. Um, actually, this November coming up, I'm, I'm super excited for this. We, we are teaching in the first kind of official German school. Uh, we are teaching a subject oh. there. For about for about six weeks, um, so we have a real class with with um, real students, 30, 30 students, and uh, wow. we are kind of integrated into into the timetable now, which is super exciting. Amazing. Um, so yeah, we expanded to workshops. Um, we also still produce content um, in in written form, sometimes in video form. Um, on the one hand side, to to kind of give that content to students after the workshops, but also if students find us. Um, just on the internet that they have something that they can consume and they can learn more about. Um, also within that kind of content area of us falls our great collaboration that uh, mm -hmm. we have with, with Zenodes where uh, we produce some content surrounding the basic competencies of financial literacy um, that will be covered then on the Zenodes platform. Maybe you can, you can add some points on yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited about that. 